As we descend into the 2020s, it should come as no surprise that home security should be one of your top prepping priorities. Today we're going to talk about the 11 layers of home defense. Let's get to it. In previous videos, I've introduced the concept of concentric layers of home defense. In this video, I hope to better illustrate that concept and hopefully give you some useful tips on what you can do to fortify your home. The point of this video is to help you strategize your home defense from various threats like burglary, home invasion, riots, angry mobs, or even a post-disaster environment which is wrought with lawlessness. The main purpose of these layers is to protect you and your family. Your possessions are secondary and by and large replaceable. This means that in some predicaments, if you are outmanned and outgunned, your safety may require you to abandon your home. But the more of these layers you have activated, then the less likely you will have to exercise this option. You can give yourself one point or 10% for each one of these bases that you have covered. That would give you a total of 110% readiness if you had all these boxes checked. It doesn't get more ready than that. Initially, there was only 10 layers to this concept, but the 11th layer is a bonus one that not many people are gonna have, but if you have one, that's awesome. Now the 11th layer of defense and a bonus layer is gonna be a bunker or a panic room. The purpose of a safe room is a place for you to hole up in case of an emergency. But it should be noted that these are only meant to protect you for a couple hours until emergency services can arrive. If we're talking about a post-disaster world where help won't be able to come, you might just be a sitting duck. It won't be a good idea to hole up in one of these if help isn't coming. A panic room is basically a vault for people, a mini castle keep so to speak, which will act as a fortress for you and your family in the case of home invasion or some disasters. The bunker also serves a similar role. Some bunkers can also be outfitted with escape hatches. Most homes can have safe rooms retrofitted into them. This involves fortifying the walls, doors, having a power supply, a surveillance system, and a way to communicate with the outside world. Now the 10th layer of defense is you and your family. You are the last line of defense. And your ability to defend against or neutralize a threat at this point is going to rely on your self-defense capability or firearms training. Something to note is that the invader is under the fog of war. You have a home field advantage, and it's historically a well-known fact that an invading army is twice as likely to incur casualties as a defending one. Leverage this advantage to the fullest. If you live in a country which permits the use of firearms for home defense, close quarters weaponry like shotguns that don't require incredible accuracy and have the capability to shoot a variety of different rounds are the most useful for home defense. Being mindful of the fact that you impose a risk of friendly fire to your family who happens to be in the house at the time. There are a staggering amount of YouTube channels which go into exceptional depth about firearms training and using firearms for home defense. Perhaps one of the most important fail-safes within this layer of defense is having an escape plan. It's not worth the trauma or at worst the fatal end that your family might incur to protect your belongings in your house. There is no shame in fleeing the scene if at any time you feel that the odds are against you. Some other items you'll want to consider for home defense, especially in the case of a breakdown of law and order, are things like fire extinguishers, fire blankets, a gas mask with the appropriate filters to protect against smoke and or pepper spray, sandbags for flood mitigation and home fortification, high-powered blinding spotlights, close combat weapons, and pepper sprays. It's essential that you have a strategy to deploy these items at a moment's notice. A first aid kit is also a must. The ninth layer of defense is going to be guard dogs. Guard dogs are a great threat deterrent and can also act as a warning system but they can also easily intimidate and possibly neutralize a target depending on the breed of dog. The whole point of all of these layers of defense is to buy you, the 10th layer, time to mount a defensive or to evade. Dogs should not, however, be relied on. There's a reason why we humans are higher in the food chain. Dogs will likely get harmed if in the way of a dedicated breaching team. But again, they will buy you and your family time. 
There are many breeds of dogs for home defense. Among the most notable are Dobermans, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, Staffordshire Terriers, Pitbulls, and a variety of others. Some of these breeds, of course, have temperaments which are not always conducive to being good family dogs. Personally, my dog of choice always will be a German Shepherd, but there are plenty of excellent breeds out there, and at the end of the day, any decent sized dog who loves this family will be a force to be reckoned with if it hits the fan. The eighth layer of defense are door locks and barricades. The locks in your doors are yet another in the last line of defense. Locks are easily picked and busted through without much effort by a seasoned criminal. A simple sledgehammer or pry bar can get into almost any door in seconds. You might want to consider an extra point locking system to buy yourself more time here. However, this requires the discipline that you activate it prior to going to sleep or leaving your home if you're going on vacation or away for extended periods of time. Windows can be reinforced with window film or bars. And again, the purpose of all of these defensive measures is to buy you more time to respond so you don't have to react. Reinforcements such as door bars, window bars, night locks, padlocks, locking gates, locking storm doors, anything you can do to put time between you and an invader is going to be beneficial. A simple $1 hack that can drastically increase the strength of your door is replacing the standard 1 inch screws with 3 inch screws on the strike plate of your door. This may buy you a few more seconds when every second counts. The seventh layer of defense is your surveillance system. Now the surveillance system has two potential uses. One is deterrence. When people see that you have a camera system, they are less likely to target you because that's just one more hurdle they have to overcome and criminals always want to take the path of least resistance. The other purpose is notification and identification of potential threats in the environment. Also they serve the purpose of recording events so the authorities can prosecute lawbreakers in the future. It's important to note here that you can use real surveillance cameras, decoy cameras, or you can use a blend of the two. The purpose of a decoy camera is to simply discourage people from wanting to trespass or violate your space. But of course they won't alert you to threats and won't record events. But if you are on a tight budget, a decoy camera is better than nothing. Lots of surveillance cameras today double as motion sensors. For instance, I use a ring system which notifies me when there's movement and even has some smart features which allow it to discern between what is a real threat and what isn't. In my personal experience, hardwired surveillance systems are far more reliable than a wireless system, especially if you have them professionally installed with proprietary software. These typically are the most robust systems. In such case that the power grid goes down, you'll need a backup power supply to power your cameras and your monitor. Both of these are very low draw devices, which can easily be powered by one of the many silent lithium power generators that we've reviewed on this channel. The sixth layer of defense is going to be gates and obstacles. These are simply the way that your home or yard is structured in such a way that there's impediments that might slow down or dissuade an invader from wanting to make you a target in the first place. Even a small gate can slow down a criminal or deny them immediate access to some part of your property. Remember, criminals, just like any animal in nature, always wants to take the path of least resistance. It's important to clarify that these gates and obstacles should not provide your invader cover. Remember the Fort Knox line of sight principle. You want to enhance your visual capability and line of sight while having obstacles in the way of your invader's ingress. Shrubs and bushes can also act as a great natural barrier. A low cut thicket of berries or a bush that is still low enough to see over but hard to traverse is an excellent additional impediment. If you do have gates or a chain link fence, locking that fence is allowing you more time. The next time you go for a walk in your neighborhood, study your property or others like yours and try to mentally gain what the path of least resistance is and have a plan to intercept invaders along that pathway. Remember, the overwhelming majority of burglaries and home invasions, the criminals are accessing the home through a door and not a window. The fifth layer of defense is going to be motion lights and sensors. Lights increase the chance that criminals will be seen and thus they are a deterrent. Darkness and concealment is a privilege you never want to afford a criminal. I recently installed solar powered motion LEDs which work excellent. They don't require a hard wiring job and can be placed almost anywhere. 
putting criminals in the spotlight will make it less likely for them to proceed because they don't know if they're being perceived by you or another neighbor. The fourth layer of home defense is going to be signage. This is intended to telegraph to the would-be criminal that you are ready and waiting for them and that there are deterrents in place that are going to make it a far more risky venture if they do proceed. Signs can be notifying, intimidating, or just outright deceitful. You may have a sign that says you have an alarm system even though you don't. This in itself may deter some criminals. Lots of smart criminals aren't going to want to risk it. Other signs like trespassing prohibited communicate vigilance and a willingness to defend your property. Other signs like dog in yard or beware of dog depending on where you live, of course the legalities of the latter vary from state to state and country to country. Once again, it's going to make them less likely to target you. Even having a sign that says that your premises are under video surveillance may be enough to deter a threat. And in the case of a full-blown SHTF situation, well, the good old trusty Canadian prepper mantra, trespassers and looters may be sniped could prove to be an effective method of subterfuge whether or not you intend to actually follow through with the action or not. The third layer of home security is going to be early warning systems and perimeter defense. These are things like driveway warning systems, trip wires, or any perimeter-based system which notifies you that somebody is encroaching on your property. The difference between these and motion sensors or surveillance systems is that these may extend well beyond the perimeter of your property, giving you even more time to respond. As I said earlier, a lot of motion lights and surveillance cameras are going to double as early warning systems, and even trained dogs with their superior senses are gonna be able to detect threats long before you will. Now the second layer of home defense, and arguably one of the most important, is gonna be your relationship with your neighbors and community awareness. Having a tit-for-tat relationship with your neighbors, knowing that you have their back and they have yours, is going to be your first line of defense. Extending outwards from here, it's important that you have a familiarity with the troublemakers within your own community. I can't remember the exact statistic, and I'm not sure if this still holds true today, but the majority of burglars and home invasions are people who live within those communities. So chances are these perpetrators are going to live within literal gunshot range of your home. This is where your own reputation within the community, as somebody who is not to be messed with, is also going to come in handy. If people know that you are not a soft target, they are going to be less likely to want to mess with you. Nobody wants to risk injury or worse just to feed their drug habit, or see through whatever other psychopathic or sadistic fantasies they harbor. Whenever I go for a run around my community, I'm constantly taking a different route, and I'm constantly aware of who's who, who's the potential troublemakers, and I always make them aware that I'm aware. And lastly, the first layer of defense, and not the most important by a long shot, are going to be your remote means of community surveillance. That may come in the form of radio communications or drones. Drones allow for reconnaissance over a much larger area. I did a video on using drones for survival and preparedness a couple years ago. And although the technology used in that video is a little bit dated, the principles still stand today especially after an SHTF situation where nobody's going to ask you for your license if you're flying one. That said, there are many drones which still are going to afford you this reconnaissance capability while being lightweight enough that you can fly them in residential and commercial areas without requiring a license. I'll post a link for one of those drones in the description. Also, check out the list of other items in the description that I've put together of things that are going to help you fortify your home. And let me know where you rank in terms of this 11 layers of home defense system. Remember, you get one point or 10% for every base that you have covered. This means that the rare few people out there who have a bunker or a panic room might actually have 110% capability when it comes to home defense. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and check out our other videos in the cards which complement this one. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper on. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one stop shop for premium, high quality, brand name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.